G'day guys, welcome to Lucy's channel, Lucy Lane the Queen of Belmain. Today we're gonna to talk about how to start your dog's YouTube channel. So Lucy has a couple of very successful social media platforms. Um, it all started off when we first got loose and we started her Instagram. The main inspiration behind that was I met a guy and he said the biggest regret he ever made with his German Shepherd is he never took enough photos. So that essentially inspired me to start taking photos of Lucy and by having a little Instagram account, it'll kind of keep me accountable. Then we, so Lucy essentially did very well on Instagram and has a following of around 35,000 followers on there. And then we moved over to TikTok which was pretty cool. So Lucy has an, a massive following on TikTok of 1.4 million and a verified uh, account on there. She's done very well on the, like the vertical, vertical video content space, uh, very fast paced content. And then we decided to come over to YouTube, which is our most favorite family of the lot. We love you guys because we feel like YouTube is our space and we feel like we have a lot of valuable information to share with up and coming potential creators who want to build channels around their huge around their pets or people who may need a little push in the right direction and don't know really know where to start but now is the time to start a pet youtube channel or a dog youtube channel so guys make sure you hang out until the end of this video because I have put together a really sweet little package for you guys who wanna start your pet YouTube channel. What I've done, I've gone through and I've picked out through my own experience video titles that you need to make for your YouTube channel to get you kickstarted. I'm a firm believer, if someone came to me when I first started and gave me these first videos to make, Lucy could potentially have been, had 100,000 subscribers by now, but when we first started, it was a real trial and error process. So what we're gonna be doing here is telling you everything that you need to forget about and don't worry about because we've been there and done that and everything that you need to double down on because that's also how we've seen success on YouTube. All right, so number one, equipment. Now my first piece of advice is you don't need any crazy equipment. You don't need a drone, you don't need to fancy camera gear, you don't need fancy lighting and audio and all that nonsense. Now, you may have seen Lucy and I utilize this in the past and for our videos now, but we built up to that. And trust me, getting started on YouTube, you don't need any of that stuff. All you need is, write this down, is a smartphone that you can record a video on and a window. So one thing I learned very quickly on YouTube is Valuable information will trump production quality any day of the week. So in the past, Lucy and I have made some cinematic masterpieces using drones, expensive camera gear, all sorts of stuff, multiple people filming, really going over the top for some videos, just for fun. In reality, those videos have absolutely flopped. Someone can watch it and think, hmm, you know, that was a nice experience, but all good. Now I'm gonna go over and watch a Netflix. In saying, videos that I've made informative, where I've literally just shot on my iPhone in front of a window like this, and someone can watch it and gain information and value, and can apply that information and value to their own lives and answer questions, those videos have gone absolutely gangbusters. Again, the valuable information is what made it go viral, because people are re-watching it, People are utilizing, people are sharing it, people are going, hey, this is some good information. The last thing I wanted to talk about in equipment is there is a time and a place to invest in gear. Once you start getting a return, that being a financial return or a return of satisfaction and you really enjoy creating video content for your audience, then I will encourage you to get out there, spend some money on a nice camera, maybe buy something or a new computer to edit on. But until then, prove to yourself that this is something that you wanna do and utilize the tools that you have. <laughs> this fly is still buzzing around, it's really annoying, Luz. So my second tip is niche in a niche. So what you've done now, you've said, yes, I'm gonna start a dog YouTube channel or a pet YouTube channel. So that's a niche in itself. But what I want you to do is niche inside the niche. So not just start a YouTube channel about a German, uh, about a dog, 
but I want you to start a, a, a YouTube channel about a German Shepherd. Or if you own a Border Collie, I want you to start a YouTube channel about a Border Collie. So this is essentially gonna help you gain traction much earlier on. Because if you were to make a video on what to feed my dog, that's gonna be quite a broad topic. There's a lot of videos on that. But if you niche down into your breed specific and start targeting your breed, what to feed my Border Collie, or what food should I feed my Border Collie, you're pinpointing a narrower audience and it's a less competitive field. There is less competition in that field. So your videos are essentially going to be seen and have more chances of being seen for people to click on. So niching in a niche is super important. Once you start to gain traction inside your breed specific, then later on down the track, you can start making your videos a little bit broader. So maybe start tackling instead of what to feed your border collie, maybe you can start making broader videos on what should I feed my new dog? All right, number three is SEO, search engine optimization. What is SEO? So pretty much think of YouTube as a search engine. That's essentially what it is now. Google is a search engine, Google owns YouTube. So literally YouTube is a search engine of videos. So if you were to create a video, how to groom my border collie or my top tips for grooming a border collie or best practices for grooming a border collie, something along the lines of that, that specific video that is evergreen content will far exceed a video if you were to produce a video saying, watch my cute puppy play or something along the lines of that. People aren't really searching for those terms. So you wanna essentially answer questions in your videos and then title your videos that question. So you wanna do a video about grooming your border collie or grooming your German Shepherd. So then what I would do, I would target that video towards grooming that border collie. So how to groom my border collie. So that's essentially an overview of utilizing SEO. Beautiful part about YouTube is that it, that it trumps over Instagram and all these other platforms is your content can be evergreen. If you set it up to be evergreen, it will be evergreen. If you post a picture on Instagram or a video on Instagram, within a day, it's shelf life, it's gone. That, that picture will probably never be seen again, unless you obviously get a freakishly viral thing that yeah, not many people get to experience that. But with YouTube, you could be a new creator and you could create a video on um, my top tips for owning a new Border Collie puppy or something on the lines of that. And that video will for, remain ever relevant to any Border Collie owner going forward for eternity, as long as YouTube is a thing. So if you set your, your, your videos up as evergreen content and searchable content, you are setting yourself up for success from the start on your YouTube journey. Actually, I forgot to mention one thing when it comes to SEO. So I'm just gonna pop it in now for you. So with SEO, one thing I try to do and I try to achieve is to own the breed specific name. So, and I do this by utilizing the word German Shepherd in the description multiple times, in the title multiple times, in the tag multiple times, saying the word German Shepherd through the video multiple times. I find this gives you the best chances of getting your video to be the video that pops up. So if someone types in the words German Shepherd, Lucy's video pops up number one. And I wanna show you here that this technique actually works. So this software here is called TubeBuddy. Now this is a software, um, great software. I'll link it down below. If you wanna spend a little bit of money on it, it's like $20 a month or something. Um, in between, I think 20 and $50 a month, depending on what tier you wanna go on. You absolutely don't need this for YouTube, but it just makes things a little bit easier, especially if you're pumping out. I'm running multiple YouTube channels and it just makes my job a bit easier. But as you're starting out, no, you don't need this. But anyway, so if you see on the screen here, I've typed in the word German Shepherd. Now this is gonna rank the number, the top essentially like 20 videos. Yeah, the top 20 videos that comes under German Shepherd. So if you can see, Lucy's, Lucy's channel, essentially one of Lucy's videos is the top ranking video when German Shepherd is typed in. So that's what I tried to do. I narrowed it down and I wanted to own the breed specific word and search term on YouTube. So 
And then I can look here, Lisi's channel is actually the most dominating channel in the YouTube, um, in YouTube when it comes to German Shepherd at the moment. So you can see, so we're number one here and Lisi also has another video just down the track here, here we go. Um, don't get a female German Shepherd, which was very controversial, wasn't it, Luce? But as you can see, so that video is sitting at number 14. So I highly recommend if you have a, say, a channel about a Border Collie or a Poodle, you try and target that specific keyword. Try to own Border Collie as your dog. So if someone types in Border Collie, your videos pop up. Now, this isn't gonna happen straight away, but start targeting your breed specific, specific dog. And this will essentially allow your channel to start being seen and people to see your videos because your videos will be popping up when you type in that breed specific. Number four, super important, may sound a little bit cliche, but posting schedule. The most important thing about this is post regular videos, be patient and be consistent. I'm a big believer in consistency is the key to success in anything you do. Number five, post to be seen. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump off here and we're gonna jump into the computer. In the computer, it's so simple. And I'm gonna do a voiceover now and I'm gonna show you the back door of YouTube and show you on how to set up your video for the most success and give it the best chances of being seen. There's lots of little things you need to do in the back door here. Very easy stuff, but these are things I overlooked at the start and I set myself months behind getting my videos out there to be seen by an audience. Alrighty guys, we are now in the computer. Lucy's gonna be over here on the MacBook doing her job, um, making sure we go through the checklist appropriately. Also, you might see we had a wardrobe change out. I changed my shirt and Lucy changed the fluff. But um, obviously yesterday we didn't get enough time to finish the video, so we're going to do that right now for you guys. So, when you've made your YouTube video, one of the most important parts is how you upload it to YouTube. So, there's only a few key things that you really need to focus on and everything else is tick and flick and forget. But if you don't put the time and effort into these key things when uploading your video on YouTube, it's kind of wasted potential because you're not giving your video the best opportunity to be seen. Now the back door kind of can look a little bit confusing for first time people, but trust me it's not, and I'm gonna just narrow it down to what you need to do, what you need to know. So, follow along here, on the screen. So the first part is title. Obviously that's very, very easy to understand. You're gonna put your title in the title required area. So, how to groom your German Shepherd is our mock-up title. Now, um, for the description, super important. A lot of people don't utilize this properly and a lot of people post a video and don't even put a description. The description is important for YouTube to distribute your video out in the algorithm and Lucy agrees. So, don't. this is a wasted opportunity if you don't utilize this. Now, my pro tip for you, and this is a, a thing, it's almost like an advanced thing to do with the description is you wanna to try to utilize your title three times in your description when explaining what your video is about. That is gonna give you the best absolute chances of being seen in the algorithm. Um, and it helps a lot from, I've got the data to show from videos that I've used, the, the, when I've util, utilized the title in the description multiple times and videos that I haven't, the videos that I have have outperformed the videos that haven't exponentially. So. Anyway, make sure you put a good description about your video. The next thing to understand, thumbnails. Thumbnails are super important and they are the gateway to your video. Now you have three screenshots here that YouTube selected for you or you can upload your own custom thumbnail. I think uploading your own custom thumbnail with text is vital because that's the gateway to your video. So what you need to do here, if you don't have the Adobe suite, you can jump onto Photoshop and make one. Jump onto Canva. It's free and it's a really user-friendly app. Someone with no experience can jump onto canva.com and create a thumbnail 16 by nine and it's gonna look great for YouTube. It'll take you 20 minutes, if that, 10 minutes. But don't skimp out on a thumbnail. I'm gonna link Canva below and you guys can utilize that. Now the next thing to remember is um, to tick no when YouTube is asking, is this video made for children? So the, the answer to that is no. Lucy's videos aren't made for children. Yes, children can watch them and they can enjoy them just as much as adults can, but they're not specifically made for children. Um, if you were to tick yes for that 
and or if you are to make videos specifically made for children, there's all these new laws in place on what advertisements and how many advertisements they can put on videos. This is more than less if you're monetized, but it will directly affect the distribution of your video and the monetization process of your video. So the best practices, I you know, just let YouTube know this video is not designed for children and it's gonna get essentially the most reach possible, in my own opinion. Um, now, the next most important thing that people really underutilize are tags. So tags are super important. They're like mini titles. So I'll create a whole bunch of tags down here. Like I'll simply just type in like German Shepherd and how to groom your German Shepherd and grooming your German Shepherd and German Shepherd grooming tools and whatever. So whatever the video is about, you want to utilize in the tags. So they're like mini descriptions. So essentially, you want to use all 500 characters and again, the data is there and I can show you that the videos that I've used tags for have far outperformed the videos that I haven't used tags for. So highly important to use tags. It's really, really, really easy. Now, the next thing to remember is We're gonna tick all the way to the end. So monetization and ad suitability is not very really relevant for you guys at the moment. Um, but video elements is. So with video elements, uh, have you seen, if you may have watched to the end of one of Lucy's videos where a, a ticket pops up and it says, would you like to watch this video about Lucy? So it's giving someone another recommendation of a video to watch. That essentially keeps people consuming Lucy's content. Now, I highly recommend you put one of those up at the end. It's simply you just click add and then add video and that's it. That's as simple as that. Um, and YouTube can select the video that they recommend the viewer will most likely enjoy. Now, the next thing to remember is actually posting the video. So that's really easy. You can either save it, you can make it private, you can make it unlisted, or if you want to post it, hit public and hit save and you're good to go. Your video is now uploaded to YouTube. Number six, the plan. This is what you guys have been waiting for. So I've come up with video ideas that I've actually personally used myself that have set Lucy's channel up for the best success. And I believe if you implement this as well, you can set your own dog or pet channel up for success. So this will help build the concrete foundation to launch your channel. This is all evergreen content that can forever be searched. And especially if you narrow it into breed specific, you will pop up in the algorithm for that breed and you'll have your own audience that you can tap into. So let in no particular order, I'm gonna go through these videos for you. All right, so the first video was how much does a Border Collie cost? So again, I'm using Border Collie as an example on this, but you can make how much does a German Shepherd cost? How much does a Labrador Retriever cost? This is a very common question on the internet about dogs in general. So you can narrow that down to the breed specific so you start popping up in the search terms. Video number two is what should I feed my Border Collie? Or what should I feed my German Shepherd? Now I've personally done a video like this on Lucy's YouTube and it's done very well. A um, Couple of reasons why, because it can be very confusing to know what the correct diet for a dog is these days. And it is a very controversial topic. You have the kibble diet, you have the bath diet, you have a raw feeding diet. Jesus, you even have dogs on vegan diets now, which I highly despise if anyone does put a dog on a vegan diet. Personal opinion. So video number three is, should I get a male or should I get a female? Border Collie or should I get a male or female German Shepherd? Again, this video has done really well on Lucy's channel and I think this could do very well for any breed specific topics. The next video is my Border Collie's grooming routine. Now I've done a similar video to this, my German Shepherd's grooming routine. Um, this is a great video, especially with dogs that really molt. So German Shepherds are a very multi dog um, and there are a lot of dogs that have double coats out there and a lot of dogs that molt. Now the next two videos that I'm going to talk about are they're actually some of the most successful videos that I've done on Lucy's YouTube personally with like one of them half a million views and the other one 200,000 views and they just keep going up day by day and driving loads of traffic to Lucy's YouTube. So they are five things to know before getting a German Shepherd or five things to know before getting a Border Collie, five things to know before getting a Poodle. Videos like this do very, very, very well because it's short, sharp information and it's quite impactful. Someone can consume it and kind of make a decision or give them a good idea whether that dog is right for them or that dog isn't right for them. No, they shouldn't just go off that one video that you've made, 
but it can give someone, it can start pointing people in the right direction and it's fast information, like five facts to know right now. So I highly recommend you get on that train and create those videos about your breed specific. All right, the next video that's done very, very, very well and I think will really apply to any breed specific is five reasons why they shouldn't get that breed. Five reasons why you shouldn't get a German Shepherd has done exceptionally well on Lucy's channel. Um, and I believe all breeds have the specific reason on why you shouldn't get them. Five reasons why you shouldn't get a poodle because if you're looking for a guard dog, it's not gonna be a good guard dog. So the next awesome video idea is, should I get a Border Collie as a first dog? Should I get a German Shepherd as a first dog? Again, I've utilized this video topic on Lucy's channel and it has done very, very well because it is quite controversial. Some people say yes, some people say no. I gave my opinion um, and my answer to that you're gonna have to watch the video, so go check it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a very, very good topic. Obviously, it's gonna be very different for different dog breeds, but I think it's a great thing to cover for your breed specific. Anyway, so the next video is Day in the Life of a Border Collie, Day in the Life of a German Shepherd. Now, this video topic isn't essentially, I would say, evergreen content. Well, it kind of is, but like, I don't think as many people will be searching for that term, but they're really fun videos to make. So I believe it really helps push your creativity and it helps makes you utilize your training and it just it's a great way to build a great bond with your pup, sharing experiences and catching it on film. So again, a big believer, there is a big place in the market for them and it's also gonna help you as a content creator. So the last video idea that I have that I think could do really, really well, and this is something that I'm looking to educate myself more into and make more specific videos about down the track, for instance, um, hip dysplasia with German Shepherds. So a video like that, so pinpointing a real sore point with a breed and trying to educate yourself and then educating others on it. Now, hip dysplasia with German Shepherds is very, very, very common and essentially it is their kryptonite. Now, another video idea for this, say hypothetically for Border Collies would be, what is BCC, Border Collie Collapse? So apparently that is a condition where Border Collies and Kelpies um, collapse from exhaustion after intense exercise. Now that's a specific ailment that the Border Collies and like Kelpie breeds have. There might be other ailments that other breeds have. I think every breed kind of has its own kryptonite. So I think making videos on those topics would be a really, really good idea for your channel growth. So anyway guys, just to recap, those are my top videos that I think if you are to utilize and build your channel on, I think it's gonna set you up for the most success. And as long as YouTube's a thing, you will continue getting views, you'll eventually get monetized, you'll start making a small business out of this, and this could really project your channel into the stratosphere on YouTube. And then once you've harnessed in the breed specific, like where Lucy's channel is now, we've started going broader. So we've kind of essentially, you know, dominated the German Shepherd space in like a lifestyle German Shepherd channel way. Now we're starting to go broader and we're starting to tackle the actual whole dog community and things like that now that we've built Lucy's channel up by just targeting German Shepherd only. Anyway guys, that is it for today. I hope those video ideas really do give you a good head start. I'm a big believer that they will. They will help build a foundation of evergreen content for your dog YouTube channel and should project your dog channel into the atmosphere of YouTube and deep into that algorithm. Guys, if you got value out of this, please hit the like, drop any comments below. Subscribe if you're not, and we'll see you in the next video. Get buckies! Get buckies! Let's get buckies!